Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Unschooling Lifestyle. Today, I wanted to share a little bit about our personal journey because journaling and writing has always been a big part of uh, my life, right? It's a it's a healing mechanism. It's something that I do. I write stories. I write poetry. I have uh, random thoughts, you know, you name it. So I have a notebook in almost every bag that I use for work. Um, I have them everywhere. So, but I found this one a few days ago and it's dated August, 2018. And in July, 2019, I wrote the following. The thought of homeschooling has come back to me again, but I'm afraid. Yet, I feel that it can be a wonderful experience. This is because I'm racking my head around our schedules and how I can fit all of our activities, right? So, I, and, um, and then I wrote, however, my main concern is creating a suitable learning environment that can be conducive towards learning and not to be at home. <laughs> okay, so so this was July 2019, right? So I'll try to create a timeline here of um some of the things, the the highlights and the reason and how our um evolution in this journey began. So this was 2019. I was graduating from undergrad from the University of Michigan, and I had been accepted to the School of Business, the Ross School of Business, to become a CPA. So it's a master's in accounting. It was a 10-month-long 10 10 program, right? So I was ready to go full force into this. But then, <laughs> then um, this the thought of homeschooling, the thought of like traveling with my children full time was like, just like very strong. The need to be there, that's, it was very strong. That's the reason why I actually had gone back to school because I wanted to leave uh, the airline industry because I wanted to be home. So, um, so, you know, 2020, uh, we started like traditional homeschooling, you know, uh, because of the pandemic. So my husband and I said, let's just try for a year. And then I started getting connected, you know, with other people, you know, started finding our circle, our people. And through those circles, there were three tools that I came across that were very powerful to us. And the first one was Julie Boer's book, The Brave Learner. Her book, it was, it's very, very empowering, very just full of stories, you know, full of, uh, yes, you can do it. You know, this are different options that you have. And in there was the word unschooling. And it was just learning through life, right? In short. So I was like, this is what I want to do. We wanted to travel, you know, we didn't do a lot of that in 2020. You know, obviously we all know what happened. Uh, so, but that's the way I wanted to go, right? That, that was my, I was like, this is what we should be doing, you know, to just to just travel and explore and just get to know other people and to just learn from the world. So, but I still was caught up in the traditional aspect of it. So I bought tons of curriculum, spends tons of money, almost $10,000. And, uh, you know, so I was navigating those, 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 um, you know, those dynamics within our family. So then the second piece that came to me that was very, very much uh, very powerful was Akilah Richard's book, Raising Free People. And I've talked about this in the past, you know, her book was powerful because she put the way we see our children in terms of our children being colonized. And the reason why it resonated, that resonated with me, it's because my undergrad had been in Latin American and Caribbean studies and Romans languages and literature, Spanish and Portuguese. So I was very familiar and being from Mexico, I was very familiar of the legacy of colonization, you know, of what that looks like. And I was very familiar with that, with that terminology, with those, you know, the examples in real life and stuff like that. So it was very um it was very eye opening to see to see that right and then the next piece was when i started uh uh the an advocacy and coaching program with Dana Martin she's an advocate for uh she's a radical unschooling advocate has been for almost 20 years 
And when we started to explore the dynamics of the uh, authoritarian paradigm of being a parent versus being a respectful parent or, you know, like peaceful parenting type um, um, type of thing, right? So I started to see those patterns in myself. And by then I was already, I was already, I'd already started a blog. It was homeschooling with a twist. And that was because there was a lot of stuff that I learned at the beginning, even through my traditional homeschooling journey that I wanted to share with others, right? I wanted to make it easier for people to find find the courage to to take that leap, that leap of faith to to know that it's that if you're wondering, if you're questioning, there is something to that. And you should follow that. You should dig a little bit deeper. That's what my son says. Take a shovel because you have to dig deeper. So that's what my son says. And that's kind of the way we live, right? Or that's kind of how I approach things nowadays. I, when something like, um, you know, it's there, when I, when it stays with me, I like dig a little deeper as to why that is, right? So, so those are, um, I'm looking this way because I'm trying to stay on track here. So those are, you know, I want to say probably almost the the three biggest things, you know, through uh, that have helped my professional development in helping others to transition to unschooling. Um, you know, Dana's program, it's it was a year long and next week uh, I have uh, we have our last meeting. But through the program, I have learned a lot and I have. Um, I have grown a lot too, but seeing this little piece of, um, seeing this little piece of, uh, you know, paper in my words and I can, I can almost see myself back then writing this words and just fully feeling that fear of not knowing that if I was doing the right thing for my family or for my children. And, um, and don't get me wrong, I'm very aware that sometimes this lifestyle has, um, it's not, it's not easy for everyone, if, especially if you have two working parents, but the premise of being respectful towards your children, you know, it can be practiced whether you're unschooling or just going to traditional school. It is mm -hmm. the learning of ourselves and to find out how we like to be treated and how we treat our children and most important how we were treated as children ourselves because as I am more you know like I'm diving deeper into advocacy into in um not just for children you know I have noticed that the biggest aspect of this lifestyle is the healing that we do as parents and um sometimes, you know, and I sometimes, you know, I say healing and I think a lot of us think of like extreme trauma, but it really, the healing that we have to do comes from all kinds of things. It can be from, you know, having to, you know, had had good grades all the time because you knew if you didn't have good grades, your parents would be upset or something was going to be taken from you if you didn't get those good grades. And we often see that, that healing happening in our adult lives. And then, you know, how many people say I was working the corporate job, but I didn't feel happy. And then all of a sudden they find themselves, you know, traveling around the world and stuff like that. So when we, you know, so that's the healing that we have to go through in order to for us to feel confident and in respecting our children and their choices, right? Uh I could say a lot more in this, but I can honestly um the reason why I'm doing this video today is because um in podcast, I think I'm gonna put it into a podcast format, is because the healing that we have to do as parents it's like massive it's like big ah and i love 
the way this has turned out for us. Um, it hasn't been easy. I can honestly say that, but we all need this healing, you know, because, uh, most of our, um, our baggage almost, you know, comes from unmet needs. Uh, maybe we needed to be hugged as children a little bit more. We needed to be told that we were good. We needed to be, um, to be cuddled. We needed to, we needed to have space to finish a project or we needed to have space for someone to say what you're doing is valid. So all of that stuff shows up when we have children. And then we sometimes feels like you have a second chance, right? To make it right. And it feels like you have a second chance to do what you didn't have as a child not realizing that that's not your second chance. That's not our second chance. It's our children's first chance, first and only chance, right? So, uh, yeah, I just wanted, you know, so this is, um, you know, this is kind of where our journey is at right now, but this is where we were. So we were afraid, you know, TV was the main concern. <laughs> I don't know why. Because for a while, we didn't even have a TV, though. So I just want to encourage you, if you are feeling this way, if you are feeling that you want to go into a, the a road less traveled, um, keep searching, you know, keep searching, keep reading, you know, keep, uh, keep listening to yourself, right? Uh, listen to yourself and be authentic to yourself. Show up authentically to yourself, for yourself, and for your children. Uh, here at The Unschooling Lifestyle, our main mission is to empower families, to empower parents uh, to live authentically with their children and to live in a respectful environment. So sometimes that could look like unschooling and sometimes it doesn't, you know, right? Everyone's journey is different. Everyone's uh, opportunities are different. But if you want to explore, I invite you to send us a message. Let us know what you think. Um, oh, wow. This felt, um, I guess I've been wanting to try to say this for a while now. So yes, we are here for you. There's there are many, many resources. There are many, many people more uh, you know, more experienced than I am. Um, but I invite you to, to just to just find out the find out the people, the the stories, the 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 resources that you resonate with the most, you know. Uh maybe I'm just a I'm just a little a little voice that get get you started and I think that's really what my main uh, mission is I just want to get you started so um yeah so I hope this helped you if you are feeling afraid like I was back in 2018 um I hope you can take this and just kind of take the next step just read a little more you know search a little more you know talk to someone and um and then just find a different way to live in partnership with your children. If what you're going right now doesn't feel right, if it doesn't feel right to you and it maybe doesn't feel right for them either, you know? So um, yeah, I hope you have a beautiful, beautiful day. See you next week. Um, until next time, please remember that your time is precious. I hope you're making it count. Take care. Bye.